Good afternoon all, it's Alex. I hope you're all OK. Um, John, are you um, happy to kick off? No, not ready. OK. No, I am. <laughs> I'm Good answer. <laughs> I'm oh, what's all happening? Thank you. Sorry, I'm just um, getting myself sorted. Right. Um, yes, I'm ready, Alex. Shall I go? Yes, that's great. Thank you, John. Okay. Um, afternoon, everybody. Um, love to see you all. Thanks for taking the time to um, join in the the uh, update and the Q&A today. So I've got um, Julie Atfield, uh, Exec Director of um, Mental Health and Disability Services, and um, somewhere I should have Anne-Maria. Um, Hello everyone. Here you are. <laughs> How can we miss her? Uh, Director <laughs> of Personal and Quality. Um, joining today from the Exec team. Um, really, uh, happy to um, take questions. We'll try uh, and answer them, but obviously um, there's some stuff that we might need to get a bit of detail on um, after the meeting and then feedback. So um, fire away. Before we do that, though, just some headline updates to, to brief you all on, on where we are. Um, and at, at risk of this sounding a bit like Grand Old Day, we <laughs> The, um, the things that you're all working on um, are pretty similar to the, the things that we were working on last week. And then um, just again, to start off by saying thank you to everybody for what you're doing. Um, the, we, we, we do appreciate that um, we are in the middle of something that is pretty massive at the minute and it's taking um, all of our time and all of our skills and all of our resilience to um, do the best thing we can for patients and um, support all our staff. Um, wherever they are. So thank you for what you're doing individually and thank you for your teams and the personal leadership that you're showing. Um, overall, um, it's tough. I think the trust is in a pretty good position um, in terms of what we're managing. Um, the, 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 the lockdowns having um, many implications on how we run our services and appreciate that people having to be um, redeployed and work very differently, manage you know, challenging environments, PPE, etc. Um, but um, we continue continually hearing really fantastic stories of, of how people are managing. Um, just a, a brief update on where we are in terms of more broadly in the system. The um, you'll have seen in national media that fortunately some of the um, the number of cases and the rates are starting to fall um, nationally. Um, we haven't seen that fully across the age spectrum yet in Nottingham and I think in Nottinghamshire, and I think in the East Midlands more broadly again. Um, we, we're probably at the peak, but we haven't seen any sort of major plateau or reduction yet. And as we're familiar with now, the, the, um, the follow on from that is two to three weeks later, the, the levels of demand for hospital admissions and um, crisis care and a, a couple of weeks that after that, the sadly, the the, um, the the number of deaths figures, which are still so um, sadly very high across the country. Um, so the, the, the acute hospitals in our system are rammed, um, are under massive pressures um, to particularly in their critical care services but across all hospitals um, and there's a lot of what's called mutual aid going on between all the different organizations and assist and try and help out and support all our teams where we can um, and the the forecasts are that the next two to three weeks at least are going to continue to be as tough um, so let's just give you a bit of a sense of um, of what we expect after that um, hopefully things will start to ease a bit um, and then um, hopefully we'll uh, again from a, a national perspective we'll, st we'll start to see um, some of the impacts on um, the benefits of vaccination more of that in a second um, so 
That's probably uh, um, as much to say on on all things sort of lockdown more broadly. Um, a couple of specific bits I'd, I'd like to keep you updated on. One is um, the lateral flow testing. So we've had a, a really good response um, from from all our staff in terms of the reporting of this. And um, there's been a there's been a huge uptick in um, the rates back, but we've still got some pockets where um, w w we're a bit low. Um, enabled to evidence that, for example, ward areas that the vast majority of staff are using it and reporting their scores. So again, if you could pass that on and make sure that um, your your people in your teams are reporting their lateral flow results a couple of times a week, um, it's an easy thing to do. And it's also you're able to do it retrospectively. So even if people have missed four or five weeks, say, and are thinking, oh, I don't really want to dot myself in um, the most important thing is to get the results in um, you can do it retrospectively and that will really help um, us understand um, where the challenges are but it also importantly helps us on the reordering so that we've got enough stock for the redelivery um, for the for the next few months ahead. Um, Anne Maria can talk um, in much more detail about outbreaks. Um, we're at a steady state, but it, it's proven um, a big challenge to manage. Um, and uh, uh, just a, a restatement again um, to continue to urge people to maintain social distancing and to use PPE um, and not to relax coming out of um, the more obvious sort of clinical areas, because oftentimes when we relax, have a tea, have a chat, um, those and behaviours can and get put aside and that's when the virus pounces, unfortunately. Um, and then um, to, to give you an update on the vaccinations. So this is a good news story nationally. Um, the, um, the provision of these is ahead of trajectory. I think last big number I saw it was over 4 million. Um, and is going um, really well from a what essentially was a standing start before Christmas. Um, our system that we're leading in across the county, and we've got a couple of more sites to go live over the next few days and early next week, and then all the sites will be open. And the vaccine supply is now starting to come through a bit more reliably, but it can still be a bit patchy. Um, which is why we've continued to, uh, uh, until yesterday, um, contain the ability to book. Um, we've had a couple of trials that have gone well, um, but understandably the, the slots have been um, snapped up very quickly. And again, we're just asking people to um, please be patient. We're, we're running as quickly as we can to set up the, the systems and processes to, to, to make this slick. Um, but there's, you can, I'm sure, understand massive political pressure to make sure that um, the priority groups are done. Our biggest challenge in the county at the moment is uh, ensuring that all people, residents in care homes and care home staff get their um, first dose by the end of this week, by the end of Sunday. Um, and it's um, a, a very big task, but um, we're optimistic that we can do that. And then by the end of the month, it's all people over 80. Um, there's lots of roving teams that are, are going around the county picking up people that are housebound. Um, in terms of our staff and um, patients, staff first. Um, uh, I, the last number I saw, I think we were at about two and a half thousand of our staff had um, received the vaccine out of about seven, seven and a half thousand eligible. So um, already that's a good rate. Um, and um, you'll have seen yesterday that we're starting to open up the, the ability to book, um, book in for a, a vaccination. Um, and as I'm sure you'd expect, we're, we're hoping to enable um, this to be done as soon as possible. And again, to thank people for their for their patience, because I, I know there's, there's a lot of interest um, to make sure that um, it, it's rightly available for us. And we we'll, we'll still continue to protect a couple of booking slots so that we can um, make sure that the, the our priority staff groups, those at high risk, that are clinically vulnerable, 
um, and shielding can um, avail themselves of it. Um, then on patients, again, we're pushing and escalating to both regional and national teams about um, trying to make sure that we can get our patients vaccinated. Um, you'll be um, familiar with the challenges of, of managing across a number of our clinical settings, whether it's um, those that are detained or in secure services and um, people with uh, dementia, cognitive impairment, learning disability, etc. So it's a big long list that um, we would like to be able to get vaccinated as soon as possible. With the increased rollout of the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, that will become much more practicable to do. Um, I think we're probably still a week to two weeks away from that supply being sufficient enough to make it um, a more easy thing to, to carry out. And um, we're still um, hampered by the fact that our trust is, has not yet been designated as a hospital hub and then therefore can't receive um, vaccine supply directly. And um, that we're not any different to any other mental health community trust. Um, it's just the way that the, the national programme has been designed. But again, we're optimistic that this could happen over the next couple of weeks. And then um, the last vaccine piece from me is um, just a note on um, what you'll have been reading about second doses. And I know some staff have been um, disappointed to receive a cancellation or a deferral of their booking for a second dose, which has moved them from um, anything from the next couple of weeks um, to make sure that it's um, at the end of a 12 week of the 12th week from their first dose. And again, this is a national instruction um, and it isn't just staff, but we've had within the system, we've had to defer quite a significant number of of, of people to week 12. Um, I, I think there's emerging evidence, scientific evidence that it's OK to do that and doesn't um, doesn't hamper your, your your body's ability to to um, get those the levels of immunity right, but the national um, message is that by doing the twelve week it creates more slots for more people to receive their first dose, and that's the first dose is the most important in in terms of getting your immunity up to something that's at least reasonable from zero. So that that's the reason for that. Um, and obviously everybody that's getting a first dose from now will have a, um, a second dose booked at, at um, 12 weeks. Um, so that's probably as much as I want to say um, by um, way of sort of summary and introduction, um, apart from the fact that don't forget the flu, um, flu vaccines are still available um, in, up until February. We're doing well, we're at 78%, I think was the latest figure from Amria this morning which that's um, right, that's right. Um, has been a fantastic um, effort in 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 the circumstances and um, but there's still it's still available it's a good thing to get done um, you need to wait seven days after your flu before you can have your covid vaccine um, and as we all know if you don't get protected if you have them both together the um, the outcomes can be really quite nasty so um, keep flagging that to to your people um, so that's my introduction summary, um, Alex, back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just looking at what's on the chat and um, just to highlight some of them for the recording um, that um, Anne Maria has now said that we're almost at 3000 um, vaccines delivered across our organisation, which is phenomenal. Um, and also that the uh, lateral flow test kits are being given to bank staff and new starters and also to university staff so that's fantastic as well so um thank you ever so much um there is one more question which is just linked to um what you've been saying around vaccines um and that was just that there's a lot of um different links and things and phone numbers um going around on social media just really if you wanted to um say anything about that about who people are best to contact um, for um, their vaccines and about sharing things on social media as well. Sorry, I muted myself. There's um, so that's so we've got some lines on that, Alex, in the, in under um, answer five. Is that right? Um, in the sheet you've given me. Sorry, I'm being a bit dull. Um, 
Is that booking options for vaccines, yeah? Alex, speak to me. Sorry, it'd be helpful if I wasn't on mute. Um, yes, um, absolutely, John. It's just around the, the, the some of the links that are being put on Facebook. Yeah, so we'll we'll make this um, available afterwards, but there are currently two self-booking options. One is um, for Kings Mill Hospital and another for the local vaccination centres. Um, and you book on the relevant link to, and select dose one, COVID-19 vaccination option, select a preferred date and time and register. Um, the other important thing to know is um, you need to know your employee number um, and also you'll be asked for your NHS number, which isn't a number that necessarily you'll have to mind. Um, or but it's it's really important that you have it because essentially um, it's like a prescription. So if you've got an old prescription lying around in your in your tablet cupboard at home, that might be a, have your NHS number on. You can get it from your GP um, surgery, obviously. Um, but it, and it might also be on correspondence that you that you've had. But that's a really important number to to avail yourself of. And what will make um, sure that we've got clarity um, in the messages that we put out in terms of um, what the booking um, links are for people because it can be confusing and there, there's a lot of stuff um, on social media that can sometimes be a bit confusing or um, um, or wrong. Yeah <laughs> that's great thank you John. Um, just to highlight in the chat as well um, Angela has asked, what is the take up of the COVID vaccine um, for uh, BAME staff? And Tracy Orlandi's advised that she's going to run a report on that so that we'll be able to we'll be able to get you those figures, Angela. So thank you ever so much, Tracy. Um, and Anne Maria has um, highlighted that there's currently 15 outbreaks across the organisation. Um, so this reflects high incidents out in the community as well. Um, and Jordan has highlighted, um, if you have the NHS app, your NHS number can be found on there also. So thank you ever so much for, for all of that. Can I just, um, sorry Alex, whilst um, Angela's in the chat and on the on the call, that it's a really important point about um, BAME and other um, minority groups. We know already from some of the reporting in the system that um, it's looking like the uptake um, is lower than the general population um, for reasons that, that um, I'm sure people would, would be aware of. Um, and we've started to look at to get a bit more data on that from a system perspective so we can start to identify where, in which what those vulnerable groups are and what our response is to make sure that we um, we can intervene sooner rather than at the end just going oh well you know so so many percentage of various groups didn't get it um because this is a critically important piece to get right so for example we're starting to work with um various community groups and community leaders to um look at ways that we can um enable them to get access um we're looking at um how we could target the roving team and there's also going to be a, a, a facility for us to provide pop up clinics, um, whether it's in community centres or churches or whatever, uh, as the weeks roll by and um, to make sure that we do address that. And it was it was a request actually for, um, that had come through the system, whether through Angela and the our BME network and um, they would um, like to help um, inform how we could target some of, of um, these important groups to make sure we get vaccinated. So, Angela, if you wanted to, and uh, not necessarily in 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 this call, but um, get in touch because I'd really like to follow that um, that conversational thread up. Please, It'd be really helpful. That's great. Thank you, John. And um, Angela's um, highlighted that she's booked in, so that's fantastic as well. Excellent. Um, just move. On to some of the other questions moving away from um, the uh, COVID um, we've had um, it's a it's a long question from a um, from a member of staff um, at Rampton on the bank um, and um, 
it states um, NHS England and NHS Improvement have made clear that full pay should be paid to bank staff where they need to self-isolate. Full pay should be should also extend to bank staff. Staff should also receive full pay while self-isolating for all pre-booked bank shifts that they would have worked that had they not self-isolated. Alternatively, trusts may choose to pay bank workers self-isolating on a look back approach, looking at what they have earned over a reference period and paying during the period of self-isolation. NHS employers and NHS improvements contacted trust in March 2020. Data collected from trust show that almost all have a rostering system that books shifts at least one month in advance. So the shifts booked approach should not lead to excessive additional admin burden for trusts and would mean that staff were paid for the shifts that they have worked. The COVID guidance explains that during self-isolation, bank workers should be paid on the basis of either the shifts that they have booked, bearing in mind their understanding that shifts are booked at least one month in advance, or based on a look back approach, looking at previous bank earnings. However, NHS employers do also state for consistency, it is recommended that previous bank earnings over a reference period are looked at as a basis to calculate full pay. At Rampton Hospital, after submitting our availability, we are contacted at best 72 hours in advance to book in for shifts, although this can be 48 hours to 24 hours in advance. We are therefore unable to receive full pay while self-isolating or if we are COVID positive, as the trust has chosen not to use the look back approach. Is this decision something that can be readdressed in order to make it a fairer process for all and not leaving Rampton Bank staff in financial difficulty whilst we are continuing to work throughout the pandemic and correctly adhering to self-isolating requirements? So, um are you still with me, Alex? Um, the, the, yes, sorry. Yes, John. sorry. That, um, so, um, that it's a really important point, isn't it? Because um, uh, we've been saying, I've been saying consistently, hopefully, that um, we sh we should, wherever possible, make sure that people aren't financially disadvantaged by um, the the effects of the pandemic. Um, this is. This is a, um, a detailed question uh, and we put it on really because it's important to, to just evidence and show that um, it's good that we're able to, people are able to raise it and um, to give feedback that um, we will look at it. So we pass it on to the people and culture subgroup of the trust um, to look at again. Um, it's this group that advise on the terms and conditions of employment includes staff side chairs too. Um, so we can look at this in more detail and um, make sure that we get a response to that um, important question that's been raised. Excellent, thank you ever so much. Um, this question, I think um, Julie Atfield um, may wish to answer this. Um, um, it's regarding annual leave. Um, the communication on John's daily emails back in September was stating that up to five days annual leave could be carried over. I work in a department who've been working from home since the beginning of first lockdown. We were told by senior managers in our department we could carry over leave and this was agreed with some people. Communication from our managers has now changed and we are apparently not allowed to carry over leave as this message was for frontline staff only. This was not clearly stated in any of the initial communication and um, staff who maybe would have used the sell annual leave offer um, have now missed that opportunity due to the sudden U-turn. Can you confirm if this is only for frontline staff? Thank you. Hello, I, I, I like answering questions about leave. I spend quite a lot of time doing this. Um, the principle about leave is we want staff to take leave and keep well and healthy, especially at the moment. I know you can't go and do all of the things you like to do on leave, but um, we do encourage you to take all of your leave if you can. So the principle is actually, this applies to everybody, is about taking all of your leave if you are able to. Now, this year it's obviously been very exceptional circumstances and um, you are able to take um, up to five days leave uh, if that's agreed by your senior managers and you can in fact in very extraordinary circumstances carry over 10 days leave. Now 
if we've not been clear about the differentiation, the sort of application of this is it doesn't necessarily matter what your role is, because I think the definition of a frontline member of staff isn't necessarily um, the factor about whether you've been able to take your leave or not. So we don't make that differentiation and exclude people who might not see themselves as frontline. So this applies to all staff and it is based on the principle of if you've been able to take your leave. Um, so it, it's not necessarily necessarily split by your role in that way. It is about have you been needed and necessary and not able to take your leave because of the circumstances that have been experienced. It's not about your role specifically um, and do talk to your, your managers about it. Um, and the proviso that's been communicated is up to five days this year into next year and 10 days in very exceptional circumstances. And again, um, we would want you to take your leave if you can and are able to. I hope that's answered that question. That's great. Thank you ever so much, Julie. Um, and um, just going back slightly to the previous question, I just want to highlight what's in the chat um, just for the recording. Um, and Jen uh, Guiver, who is our new Deputy Director of People and Culture, um, has um, stated that just to confirm, we will make sure that. <laughs> and there she is. Hi, Jen. <laughs> um, and Jen has um, advised that she just wants to confirm that make sure that we all look at the detail of the um, of the previous question linked to the bank payment and that the people and culture team meet twice weekly with partnership colleagues to work through all details of contractual and employment related to COVID. So that will be looked at and an answer will be given as soon as possible. So thank you ever so much. Alex, um, yes. before we go on, um, if Jen's there, would, would she like, just like to say, introduce herself and say hello to everybody? Because um, she's only, um, I know you've not just joined the trust, but you're just back with us from maternity leave and there's quite an audience, so um, they won't know your face. So there you go, Jen, yeah. just say hello to everybody. Hi everyone, yeah, I'm Jen Guiver. Um, I started with the trust on the 5th of um, January. Um, come from Derbyshire Community Health Services, um, where I, I've just come back from maternity leave, having had my little boy, Toby. Um, starting to get to know lots of people, get to know my new team. Um, obviously quite tricky with um, starting the day of lockdown three, um, but I'm trying my best and thank you for the warm welcome. Um, as I said, that ramps inquiry is very specific. So we do need to walk through it with staff partnership to make sure we get a consistent approach that we can use in other scenarios that are similar. Um, so we'll do that um, this week or early next. Thank you ever so much, Jen. Thank you. Um, just moving back um, slightly, and I don't know if Anne-Marie wants to answer this. Um, as a member of staff, do I still need to isolate for 14 days if someone in my household has symptoms of COVID-19? OK, so this is important because I've seen some um, uh, chat on the close Facebook page, staff close um, Facebook page around isolating. So um, from the day you get symptoms or the day of your first um, positive COVID swab test result, uh, you um, isolate for 10 days, 10 days. What's really, really important, and we've had Public Health England's advice about this, is you do not isolate again if a member of your family becomes positive within that 10 days. Um, so I was working it out uh, some, for myself, right? If all of my family caught COVID at varying steps, I could probably stay away from, away from work until at least July. So uh, what you mustn't do is think that on day eight, if um, one of your uh, members of your family becomes positive at that point or has symptoms at that point, you don't then need to do another 10 days from that point. You just do one 10 days um, from, um, the, from the first day of your symptoms or if you didn't have symptoms, the first day of your positive result. That's fantastic. Thank you ever so much, Anne Maria. Um, and just um, just uh, whilst whilst you're on, there's one more question which um, somebody had asked on the Facebook page actually, which was um, 
do we know if we can opt for the Oxford vaccine? Um, her partner at EMAS has had the vaccine, which was the Oxford one, and she would prefer that. Is it possible for somebody to opt to have the other vaccine? Do you want me to answer that? Oh, OK. <laughs> yes, please, John. Um, well, um, I, I suppose the answer is no. At the minute, there isn't an option. Um, there, there are two of the three that have been approved. Two are in use. It's the 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 one is the Pfizer one, um, or Pfizer Pfizer BioNTech, um, and that's the the tricky one that needs to be frozen, um, and is predominantly available in hospital hubs. So that will be at Queen's Med City and um, Kings Mill in Mansfield, and the other one is the AstraZeneca Oxford. Um, which is much easier to manage and therefore more widely available. Um, and that will be the one that will be used probably um, much more. Um, so there is um, a sense that um, whilst it's not been specified that you can choose, if you, if you click a link to a hospital hub, you're more than likely to get the Pfizer one. If you click a link to a local vaccination centre, you're more likely to get um, the Oxford one. Um, and that's probably as much um, choice, if you like, that people will have at the moment. Um, I don't know of any um, plans um, as more become available. There's another one that's been approved, which isn't available yet in the UK, the Moderna one. Um, I don't know of any plans yet as to to you know when we've got I don't know three four five vaccines if, if there's a choice um, ordinarily in vaccinations there aren't and um, there are different flavors of vaccines for flu and other things um, so I think it'll be it probably going to stay um, like it is at the minute but I'm starting to ramble because I don't know anything else sorry Alex no that's that's great thank you ever so much John um, we've had um, a a, a question as well from Dr. Kayla, which has been um, responded to by Anne Maria um, and Tracy Orlandi, um, which was um, Do we need to inform Knotts HC if the vaccine was received outside of the trust, for example, uh, from local GP? And Anne Maria has said, Yes, please, Dr. Kayla, this is uh, really important and will help us greatly. Um, and Tracy Orlandi has advised that a form is going to be going on to connect this week to. Um, to complete, or you can um, email the instant control admin um, and we'll send out the form as well uh, before it goes on to connect. So yes, please, that sounds, that's great. Yeah, um, I don't know if anybody- Just to add that, um, it's a great question. And um, yeah, that, that, yeah, let us know. Um, can't understate the amount of um, political um, and regulatory oversight there is on this um, to, to the point where we're having um, at least daily calls with um, the regional team to be able to state um, within the nearest single digit how many we've done of each cohort and when are we going to do the next one and when are we going to do the next one. The, the, the scrutiny is phenomenal. I've, I've never um, come across anything quite like it really. And um, so we've got a call at one o'clock and we'll, we'll be read the scores on the doors. So um, it's really important that we make it as easy as possible for people to let us know um, when they've had the jab. And because um, within um, health and social care staff, you, you know, one of the top priority groups and will um, will be managed within an inch of our lives on the numbers. So, yeah, please let us know. Thanks. That's great. Thank you ever so much, John. Um, and um, just to let you know, there's no other questions that have been sent in. So if anybody has any more questions, please do put your hand up or um, put them in the chat. Um, or if there's anything that um, um, yourself, John and Maria or Julie wish to wish to say, please, um, please let me know. You're a very quiet lot today. Um, 
I'm Ruth. Do you want to get something? I, I, I normally always have something to say, don't I? I'm, I'm not so. Um, I haven't got so much today. So my normal my normal spiel is: please, 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 go and get your flu jab. We're at seventy eight percent. You've all done fantastically, and I genuinely mean that. Um, I did put in the chat about having fifteen outbreaks, uh, but what I didn't put in the chat is that I am. I have got some level of concern still that people feel um, and are still some of some of the behaviours across the organisation. And I'm only saying some because it's not everywhere. Some people are doing an absolutely fantastic job, but some behaviours across the organisation do mean that we are still lapsing in our uh, PPE wear and social distancing. I'm still hearing stories about people hugging. Um, and also people having breakfast within two metres distancing, um, taking their masks off. Um, these are all leading to outbreaks. This is not just behaviour that um, I can just say, oh, you know, it'll go away. This is actual behaviour that has then um, um, resulted in outbreaks. Um, and then in, in positive results. Um, and as most of you are aware that our patients haven't been going an awful uh, far distances in our trust. So it is absolutely us giving the um, the COVID uh, virus to our patients. So I do have um, some levels of concern still about what staff are doing. And I think sometimes people think uh, you're not going to catch it necessarily if you're in certain environments, but you are. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't um, it doesn't stop when you're in certain rooms it doesn't stop when you're having food it doesn't stop when you're sitting down so it it spreads no matter where you are and in what environment and in what rooms you are so just please 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 be careful um because i've got more outbreaks today than i've ever had so 15's the most and that's what i'm at today so just keep um and, and it's hard for the staff themselves because they're doing such a difficult job um and they are really working under difficult circumstances. So I just want to say that, you know, we've got to look after our staff, we've got to look after our patients. And then um, ultimately that leads to us looking after our loved ones at home as well, as well. So I suppose that's my plea today. I've always got a little bit of a plea and that and that's mine today is please look after yourselves, but please be aware that we are spreading it fast and furious at the moment. Um, okay. That's about it really. I see Julie's got her hand up. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Anne-Maria. Julie? Yeah, so I, I just want to underline what Anne-Maria said. Um, it's a real time um, to continue and to actually increase our, our best practice around IPC. Um, and it's, it's really important to pay attention to all of those things. Uh, the outbreaks do have an impact on patient flow and obviously everybody's health and safety um, for people providing care. Um, I, I just wanted to add to that um, the absolute um, sort of the way that I've been really impressed about um, people's management clinically of patient flow over the last couple of weeks, whether that be through mental health or through our physical health care beds, including at Ling's Bar, um, because managing through this time has been um, incredibly difficult and we've seen some really um, collaborative and, and best practice work um, and so I want to say thank you for that but also very much to the staff that are working in redeployed areas um, to cover shortfall. Staff have been tremendously flexible um, particularly over recent weeks um, due to staff in absence and the outbreaks there's been a lot of staff moved and um, changes made at short notice so I just wanted to add a huge huge thanks for people in continuing to do that um, amongst all the other things that, that they're facing so just a huge thank you. That's great thank you ever so much. John. Yeah just to, to echo that and probably and hopefully finish on, on, a, on a positive um, that um, it, it's really difficult isn't it um, there's there's lots of things for us to make sure that we continue to stick with and um, i don't know if alex you remember that we did the connecting knots the other day the number of people that were that had been nominated for positive stars was a record um, and yeah, both, both individuals and teams 
Absolutely. In December, we had 56 uh, nominations and across 2020 overall, we had almost 700 nominations across um, Positive Stars, which is just phenomenal. It was a three threefold increase from uh, 2019. Yeah, it's brilliant and it's great um, to be recognised by your peers. Um, and it's really important that we keep recognising the fantastic work that people are doing. Um, so that's that's the only thing I wanted to 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 um to finish with, Alex. Thank you. That's great. Thank you ever so much. Um, and um, Sarah Jane Ashmore just uh, as highlighted um to uh, thank you, Julie. The team are working so so hard and trying their hardest to flex and keep flow moving with the ever changing demand. And so need thank you the vote of thanks very much appreciated our community teams are equally flexing how they work to keep patients out of hospital and to support early discharge um to so which is fantastic so thank you ever so much sarah jane and as julie said it's really heartwarming so thank you so if uh, if that's okay that's the um end of the meeting thank you ever so much for for attending um and um and uh sarah um and maria was advised to be careful with the rain coming down so absolutely with the uh, flood warnings that have been around it's uh, very important so just what we thank need. you all. <laughs> oh dear thank you ever so much and Thanks um everybody. again the, the, it will be on um next week so um and the recording I'll put that in the chat and um, and it'll go onto the um, Connect page and Facebook page. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, Alex. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.